South Africa has a number of different kinds of schools. We, we have public schools that are publicly managed. We have independent or private schools that are privately initiated and managed and funded, um, sometimes with a government subsidy. We have private money going into public schools in a number of different ways, from Model C schools to corporate social investment, adopter school programs and all sorts of other interventions paid for with private money into public schools. Now across the world many countries have another sector that South Africa is missing and you can call this different names, it's different countries call it different things from concession schools to charter schools to academies we, we are choosing the name contract schools because we like the idea of a performance contract. Essentially this is a sector of schools that are publicly funded but privately managed. And they also tend to be focused in the area where South Africa is weakest, which is improving the quality of schooling in low income neighborhoods, in poor areas, or providing for people from those kinds of backgrounds. And we are advocating that South Africa pilot a number of schools that we could call contract schools. Now, these are not a panacea for South Africa's education challenges. And you might ask why we want to divert everybody to get into this new area. The international experience is that these kinds of schools will bring non-state actors, private sector, um, parents often, all sorts of non-state bodies, and the energy and dynamism they bring into the very sector where South Africa is weakest, which is providing diversity of choice and increased quality of schooling for poorer South Africans. And this sector can become a laboratory on how to do things. So one, charter, one kind of contract school could run things in a certain way and another one in a different way. One might fail and another might succeed, but we'll learn from that. Now the key to success, because not all of these schools work in any of the countries where they're operating, uh, the World Bank estimates they're operating in over 20 different countries, they don't all work. What are the keys to the successful ones? You have to have a really effective regulatory body. So you need to set up an environment in which if you want to start a school and get public funding to do that, you approach the regulatory body. They then have a performance contract. All they should be interested in is how many kids you're going to get through grade 3, grade 6, grade 9 and matric. And is this good enough? So it's performance indicators in the contract. The contract should not specify how you meet those performance indicators. In other words, free up the, the, the social entrepreneur, the, the company, the trust, free them up to deliver quality schooling in the way they think best. A critical part of this contract is how you fund these schools and what you do when they fail. How you fund these schools, we're suggesting that these are public schools, each pupil should get the same amount of money as we spend in a public school that is publicly run. That's our view. The second thing is the regulatory authority has to close schools down if they're failing. It's always hard to do, not popular for a while, but the experience elsewhere is that if you don't do that, you get more and more schools that are not very good. Uh, so you have to specify in a fair, transparent and reasonable way, this is what we expect you to deliver. We will give you this public money if you get some pupils, if parents decide to come to your school. But we are going to monitor this very carefully and if you fail, we will close you down. Which, by the way, I think should happen to publicly managed public schools as well. <laughs>